The great Caravaggio was once asked to paint a painting of the very moment that St. Matthew was called, the very moment we've heard described in our gospel reading. You can see the painting today. It hangs in the French church in Rome. And for those people watching online, or maybe even those here on your phones, if you want to discreetly have a look, it might be worth pulling up the picture because I'd like to talk about that painting, Caravaggio's The Call of Matthew. The painting's divided into two. On the right, as you look at the painting, there's Jesus and St. Peter. On the left, there are four men seated at a table and a fifth is standing. One man at the table is counting money. And these two groups are separated very clearly in the picture. There's an abyss between them, a symbol of sin. But that abyss is bridged, is bridged by the outstretched hand of Christ pointing. Now in iconography, a hand is often a symbol of the word of God. But Caravaggio has done something interesting with our Lord's hand. Our, our Lord is pointing in the same manner that Adam's hand is outstretched in Michelangelo's famous painting in the Sistine Chapel. The word became flesh. And the word becoming flesh bridges the divide between Matthew and Christ, between God and Matthew. And if we look up, we see that the, this abyss is also bridged by the window frame which very clearly forms the sign of the cross, the ultimate reconciling act of God. Where is Matthew in the painting? Well, I'm told that scholars argue about this, but at the moment the view is that, in fact, everyone seated is Matthew but Matthew at different stages of his Christian life or his conversion. The young man counting money is Matthew the sinner, Matthew the tax collector before his encounter with Christ. He's hunched over the money, curved in on himself. Incovatus in se, as Augustine would say, deformed by his sin. In fact, if you notice his hands in Caravaggio's painting, they're no longer human hands. They're more like the hooves of an animal. There's something dehumanizing about Matthew's sin. To his left stands a sinister figure guiding his eyes downwards away from Christ, a symbol of Satan. Next to Matthew the sinner is a man with a beard, a symbol of wisdom. And his hand is copying Jesus' gesture he has become conformed to Christ by welcoming our Lord's word. So this, repre this man represents Matthew receiving God's word and so becoming like Christ in some ways. Next, there's a child 
the light, a symbol of grace shining on his face. This is also Matthew. But Matthew renewed, made new by the grace of God. Unless you become like a little child, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. This is Matthew given the fruit of conversion, a new innocence, a new life. Finally, we have a young man rising, rising from his chair, a symbol of resurrection, and he has a sword. This is Matthew cutting his ties with his old life, Matthew leaving the table to follow our Lord. And so Caravaggio's painting ends on a liturgical note because we too are called to cut our ties with our old life. We too are called to join our Lord at his table. We too are called to join our Lord at his altar.